in a second here. <coughs> Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, I'll start with Mangala Charan prayers and then we can begin our discussion today. <clears throat> Om Ajnana Timiramdasya, Gyananjana Shalakaya, Chakshurun Militam Yena, Tasmai Shri Guruve Nama, Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam, Sthapitam Yena Bhutale, Swayam Rupam Kadamayam Dadati Swa Padantikam Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Gurum Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha Namo Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Niti Namine, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesh Shunyavadi, Paschat Deshatarine, Namo Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Iti Namine, Sri Varshabhanavi Devi, Daita Ekrepabdaye, Krishna Sambanda Vigyana, Daine Prabhave Namaha, Madhuryo Jala Premadya, Shri Rupanuga Bhaktida, Shri Gaura Karuna Shakti, Vigrayaya, Namostute. Namaste Gauruvani, Shri Murtaye Dinatarine, Rupanuga Viruta, Apasiddhanta Dvantaharine. Nama Gaura Kishoraya, Sakshat Vairagya Murtaye, Vipralambara Sambode, Padambujaya, Te Namaha. Namo Bhakti Vinodaya, Sachinananda Namine, Gaura Shakti Sarupaya, Rupanuga Varayate. Gora Virbhaya Bhumestvam Nirdeshta Sajjana Priyaha Vaishnava Sarvabhoma Shri Jagannathaya Tenama Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Nama Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gora Tushanama Panchatatvatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam Bhakta Avataram Bhaktakyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu, Dina Bandhu Jagatpate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta Namastute, Jayatam Surato Pangor, Mama Mandir Matirgati, Mat Sarvaswapadam Bojo, Radha Madana Mohano, Divyad Vrindara Nyakal Padrumada, Srimad Ratnagara Simhasanasthau, Srimad Radha Srila Govinda Devo, Prishthali B. Sevimano Smarami. Shriman Rasa Rasaram Bhi Vamsi Vatatata Stitaha Karshan Venu Svaner Gopir Gopinata Shri Estana Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Shute Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gauravakta Vrikta Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Eva Kevalam, Kalo Nasteva, 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 Gatera Nyata. Okay, thank you everyone for joining and for giving me this opportunity to speak to all of you. Today is a very auspicious day, the appearance day of Lord Varahadev. Uh, some, some, some places it's celebrated today, some places it's celebrated with the Dvadashi Varahadvadashi appearance day. But I'm, I'm very fortunate and I'm very glad to be here, to be able to glorify Lord Varade and the association of such wonderful devotees. Okay, I do have a structure prepared for it. So let me open that up. Somehow I'm not surprised. <laughs> right. Okay. <clears throat> so I do have a structure, a few things that we'll be talking about, um, the external reasons for the appearance of Varadev, the internal reasons for the appearance of Varadev. Uh, the various types of Lord Varahadev. Um, there's actually multiple types given in Srimad Bhagavatam. And then we'll talk about the pastime of lifting the earth, killing of the Hiranyakashipu demon. And then, um, and then we'll conclude with uh, two bonus pastimes of Lord Varahadev connected with Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Okay. The bonus pastimes only come when I ask certain questions. And if you answer those, then you get the bonus points. Okay. So much next topic. Yeah. So before we start, I wanted to ask um, all of you: What do you know about Lord Varadev? Just just a few points that you are aware of, so we can use them as part of our conversation. 
It is so beautiful and attractive. Mm. Mm. <laughs> wow, that's true. Yeah. Anyone else? But it's sweat and it's it's blood. It's like nectar. Mm. Yeah, with all the blood, with with things that that may detest us from seeing a deity, but the blood also makes his beauty more beautiful. So it's very true. His sweat. Jai. Anyone else? He's, he saved the earth. He picked up the earth. Yeah, there was a past time that something happened to Mother Earth and he picked it up. Yeah. Right? Very good. Yeah, we'll get into that. Anyone else? One more answer and you get bonus con content. He has uh, very coarse hair. Yes, very coarse hair. Yes, exactly. And um, Lord Brahma in his prayers describes that, that the pores of your hair is, are the places from which the Vedas emanate. So the, the, the hair is also a very important aspect of Prabhupada's body. Final point? He started out very tiny coming out of the nostril of Lord Brahma. That's right. He came out of nostril of Lord Brahma in a very tiny form and then just became huge. It is described that he became like a like a mountain coming out. And Lord Brahma was confused. What just what just happened out of my nose? What's going on here? So very true. Okay, you guys win the bonus points, bonus content too. So we'll get into the two bonus contents towards the end of the class. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we begin. Um, so all the pastimes in our Leelas, in our um, all of the pastimes that the Lord performs, all the activities that he does, there's always two reasons. They are called as the Bahiranga Karana. That means the external reasons of why he does something and Antaranga Karana, why he internally wants to do something. It might be similar to what we do in our life also, that externally, for example, if I need to drive from here to the supermarket, externally, someone would look they would say that, oh yeah, he sat in the car, drove to the market, and that's it. That's the external reason that, okay, I went there. The internal reason would be that I wanted to buy something for someone, and then nobody from the external world knows about it. They just see the external reason that, oh, he sat there, he went there. So similarly, Lord, when he does his pastimes, there's an external reason of why he's appearing in the world, why he's doing it. And then there is an internal reason of why he wants to do something. So all pastimes of Krishna appearance of Lord Goranga, all of these pastimes have both external and internal reasons. And we are going to look at some of these reasons. <clears throat> For example, if in Krishna, Krishna's Leela, Krishna says, yada yada hi dharmasya, glanir bhavati bharata, dharmasya, tadatmanam srajamyaham. That whenever and wherever there is a decline of religion and rise of religion and hypocrisy, at that time I descend myself. So that we see that that is an external reason. And then we understand that there are internal reasons that he wants to enjoy pastimes with his devotees, he wants to protect the devotees, and he wants to develop the, the relationships that are in the world. So similarly, Varadev is no different. There's an external reason for why Mahavishnu chose to appear as Varadev, and then there's an internal reason for it. Okay, so before we get into the nitty gritty of the topics, I want to switch gears here and talk about greed. Now you might wonder why are we talking about greed on the appearance of Lord Varadev, right? There's the idea of greed. Um, the jivas have greed. The Supreme has greed too. There's a verse in Bhagavad Gita where the Lord talks about our greed. Can somebody give me that verse from Bhagavad Gita? What verse is that where the Lord talks about what greed do we have? Trividam Narkasyadam Dwaram Nashanam Atmana Kama Krodas Tathalobas Tasmat Etat Trayam Tejet. The Lord says that there are three doors leading to hell, mm -hmm. leading to lower kinds of life. What are those? Kama Krodha Tathalobas. Kama. Kama means mm -hmm. lust. Krodha means mm -hmm. anger. And Lobha means greed. Greed. Okay. So Krishna describes that that karma, desire for material enjoyment, desire for satisfaction of our senses, it leads to, so that's the first door of hell. That's the main door to the hell actually, because karma, if it's satisfied, then it leads to lobha, more greed, I want more. And if it's not satisfied, then if it leads, leads to anger. So karma is the first door actually, it begins with karma. So Krishna says that greed is bad in one sense, right? That we have this greed for material anchoring, material enjoyment. 
But on the other side, he talks about spiritual greed. He says that spiritual greed is good. If you have greed for something spiritual, the verse um, that I found out in Chaitanya Charitamrita is Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Matihi Kriyatam Yadi Kotopi Labhyate Tatra Lollyam Api Mulya Mekalam Janma Koti Sukratirna Labhyate. So the word that comes there is Lollyam. Lollyam means spiritual greed. Greed to be with devotees, greed to be with Krishna. So greed has two aspects. There's a material greed and there's a spiritual greed. And material greed takes us down the wrong path, takes us down the rabbit hole and then we get consumed by lower energies. And spiritual greed takes us above. So this is a clear point of understanding that there's two kinds of greed. Now, just like we have our greed, the Lord has greed too. And we have to understand what greed does, does the Lord have. So for example, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it is said, and it's taking back from what Dir Govinda Prabhu was describing the other day, the, the internal reasons for appearance just a few days ago on Monday, I think when we had the discussion, Prabhu, you read that verse, um, right? So in Chaitanya Charita Amrita, it is described, this might be from Chaitanya Bhagavat also. Kali Yuga Dharma Hai Hari Sankirtana Etad Arthe Avartina Shri Shachi Nandana. So let's take the example of Mahaprabhu. What greed does Mahaprabhu as as an example? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he started with the idea of establishing Harinam Sankirtan. Here it is said that this is the external reason for appearance of Mahaprabhu. What does he wanted to do? He wanted to establish Harinam Sankirtan. Eikaya Bhagavata Sarva Tattva Sar Kirtana Nimitta Gaura Chandra Avtar. For Kirtana Nimitta, for establishing Kirtana, he came. Kali Yuga Sarva Dharma Hari Sankirtana Sarva Prakachilena Chaitanya Narayana. Kali Yuga Sankirtana Dharma Palibare Avartina Huila Prabhu Sarva Parikare. That he came to establish Harinam Sankirtan. That's the external reason for appearance of Lord Chaitanya. He comes in Kali Yuga, he brings his uh, paraphernalia, he brings his associates, he brings his people. And as a result, he establishes Sankirtan. And Brahma Ardurlava Prema Shaba Kare Yache Patita Pamara Nahi Vache. That Brahma, who could, couldn't get Prema in a previous lifetime, can easily get the love of God mm -hmm. in this lifetime. Because Mahaprabhu wanted to establish Harina Sankirtana. I shall go to every town and village and spread the holy name and give rasas and give bhakti. Yuga Dharma Pravartinu Nama Sankirtana Chari Bhava Bhakti Diya Nachamu Bhuvana. So he came to establish Harina Sankirtana. That's the external reason of the Lord. Now the internal reason for appearance of Mahaprabhu is connected to his greed. Now he had some greed, right? <laughs> so Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila 1.6. What does it say? Shri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kidrasho Va Anyeva Swadhyo Yena Bhuta Madhurima Kidrasho Va Madhya Shokyam Chasya Madanu Bhavata Kidrasham Veti Lobhat so this verse was spoken by Srila Sarudha Mudra Goswami. It is also quoted by Rupa Goswami in Lalita Madhava. And then Krishna Das Kaviraj incorporated in Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila, the sixth verse. So Mahaprabhu, externally we can see that he's the Yuga Avatar, came to establish Sankirtana, came to give his Bhakti. Now what is the internal reason, right? So he wanted to know what is Radharani's love, right? Next, he desired to know what is my Rupa Madhuri? Why does, why does, what does Radharani relishes that I have, right? And then what's the third desire? That how does, how can she relish that beauty and how can I relish that? So these three internal desires, internal reasons for appearance of, appearance of Mahaprabhu, appearance of Krishna as Mahaprabhu, Shachi Garbha Sindhav Harindu. So here also in the, in the verse, in the third line of the verse, Shokyam Chasya Mad Anubhavata Kidrasham Veti Lobhat. Lobha. The same word is used that was used in Bhagavad Gita by Krishna to signify material greed. But here we see spiritual greed. So we took Mahaprabhu as an example that he has internal greed. And to fulfill his internal greed, to come to relish his pastimes, to understand what is in his beauty, to understand what is the love that Sri Radha feels, he comes as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that's our setup. So to understand that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu takes this laulya, this lobha, and he comes and he appears in this world. Now this seed of desire, the seed of greed 
has been progressing step by step, step by step, step by step, as the Lord is taking different avatars. Mm -hmm. So now we look at Dasha avatar, right? The 10 incarnations of the Lord that appear here. If it's getting confusing, believe me, it will get easier in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we start with Kurma avatar, Matsya avatar. The Lord has different incarnations, right? Matsya, Matsya is the fish incarnation of the Lord. Then Kurma is the the tortoise, the turtle incarnation of the Lord, right? And after that comes Varaha Dev. So we see that the Lord, some devotees, I think Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur describes that how the Lord is going from a primitive form of incarnation to the human form of incarnation, right? He's going from these animals to a, to a, to a tiny human being to Parshuram and then, so he's going from these incarnations. So there's that line of thinking and there's other line of thinking that his greed is expanding. And as his greed expands, he takes different incarnations. So in Matsya incarnation, he came and he protected. He protected, you know, who, who did he protect? As the Vedas, exactly. Manu, you know, the, it was sinking. It was the, the story of Noah's Ark, right? It's the same story in the Bible without Lord Matsya, but it's the same story exactly. And then Kurma Avtar came, right? Kurma Avtar came and the churning of the ocean was done. And then Vara Avtar came. So in between Kurma Avtar and appearance of Lord Varaha, Mahaprabhu started developing a greed, not Mahaprabhu, Mahavishnu. Now what greed was that? What are the six opulences of the Lord? What are six Aishwarya, six opulences that Krishna mm -hmm. has, that God, God has? Anyone? Beauty. Beauty. Wealth. Wealth fame. Knowledge. Yeah. Power and renunciation. Yeah. Right? So he has the element of power. Now the element of power, Bala, it's called Bal or Bal. That's why the Lord Balram, the, this reservoir of all power. So Bala, he wanted to express his Bala. He wanted to experience the power that he has. He wanted to experience, test his power. Now, how do you test? You are the Supreme Lord. You have no equal to you. So he has to test his power. So he started developing the, this greed of test of power. Now, when he developed this greed, what happened after that? The power of intention came into being. When you design something, when you really ask for something, then the world manifests it, right? We have seen it. We talk about it in our courses too. So he has this intention that I wanted to test my power. At that same time, when the Lord had that desire, we had four Kumaras, the sons of Brahma. They were... Who are the four Kumaras? They're sons of Brahma. How do they look? Like four year, five year old boys dressing naked and then they have their Brahman thread. They are ageless. They are timeless. They are as old as Brahma, but they still dress up. They still appear in a four year old form because they didn't want to grow up. They felt that if we grow up, we'll start developing lust and greed and all these vices. So as a result, let us remain four year olds. So they remain four year old. And these four boys, Sanat, Sanandan, Sanat, Sanat, Sanandan, Sanat, Sanatan Kumar. So four Kumaras. So these four Kumaras, they were, um, they, they learned the Bhagavatam from Anantadev, Anantashesha, at the lowest level of the universe, right below the hellish planets where begin, and right at the level of Patala. They sit with Lord Anantadev and they hear the Bhagavatam. One time, they decided that we need to see the Lord. They desire to see the Lord. So, so the Lord had a greed, right? The Lord had a greed that I want to test my strength. I want to explore my Ashwarya of fighting. And then when he desired, then Sanat Kumar and these people, they were just listening to Bhagavatam. They said, we want to see the Lord. So they travel all the way up. They go from uh, Patal, Atal, Vital, Talatal, Rasatal, Mahatal, all the lower planetary systems, Bhu, Bhuar, Swar, Jan, Mahar, Tap, Satya, they cross all the planetary systems. They go up. They go beyond this universe. They go beyond the Brahma Jyoti and they go to Vaikuntha planets. So these four Kumaras, Kumaras are at the Vaikuntha planets now because they desire to see the Lord, the form of Lord Vishnu. So they are going up, going up, going up. And the Vaikuntha, if you see a picture of, there's a famous chart that devotees created. I think Bhakti Vikas Maharaj and this group, they created a, a Vaikuntha chart. You can see all the planetary systems and all the arrangements. It's, it's quite beautiful. So they go up to the Vaikuntha planets. And at the Vaikuntha planets, they meet somebody. Who do, who do they meet? 
Jai and Vijay. So Vaikuntha has four doors. There's doors on all sides. And each door has doorkeepers. And if you see that Vaikuntha chart, you can see uh, where are the doors and which form of the Lord is where. It's quite, it's amazing actually to see. It's almost like a yantra, like people have three yantras. It's similar to that. So they go to the door where the two doormen are standing. They are Jai and Vijay. They are two doormen. And when they see these Kumaras coming, the Kumaras are coming and they could smell the beauty of the Lord. They could smell the Tulsi fragrances around his neck. They could smell the lotus. They could smell the smell of Chandan. Uh, my Guru Maharaj often says that the smell of Satvaguna or Shuddha Satvaguna is the smell of sandalwood, Chandan. Wow. That's the smell. So they could smell all of these things and they are, they are waiting to see the Lord. They're going. And then these two huge doormen, they're standing and they stop them. That, Who are you guys? Four-year-old, naked, just barging into Vaikuntha. Who invited you? How did you come here? And so the four Kumaras, they say, we, we want to see the Lord. The Lord is, can you not smell? Can you not see? How can you stand here? You have to go and see the Lord. So they, they are about to see the Lord, but the four, Jaya Vijaya st stopped them. They said, that, no, 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 you can't go and see the Lord. And so these four Kumaras, they are not babies. They are not kids. That's how Jai Vijay were, were seeing them. They are extremely elevated, powerful sages. And they said that, how dare you stop us from seeing the Lord of our master? This is Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha means there's no Kuntha. Kuntha means anxiety. It's a place where there's no anxiety. And here you are telling us we can't see the Lord increasing our anxiety. This is not fair. We curse you. We curse you. That all of that both of you take birth in the material world as demons, and this curse will be in effect. Now, this kerfuffle was going on outside the doors of Vaikuntha, and Lord Vishnu heard it. He came towards and he said, What's going on? The moment he walks, suddenly the smell, the environment mesmerizes all of his, uh, his representatives, his parshads, they're all there. And you can see the description of Lord sometimes in Christianity that there are angels floating. It's Lord Vishnu and his representatives actually walking around and Lord Vishnu walks and it's the, the atmosphere changes and the Kumaras bow down, Jai Vijay bow down and the Lord hears, Lord could understand what was going on. He lives in the heart of the devotees, right? That I live here. So he, he understood and he could see the four Kumaras angry after they get up. They're still angry, they're mad, but they're happy to see the Lord. And the Lord understands and he says that, my dear Kumaras, if a servant commits a crime, then the master has to take the blame. That because they are Jai Vijay Mars, my servants, then I take the blame for their misbehavior for not allowing you to enter the Kunta planets. As a result, I will also descend into the material world. And I will uh, go there with them when they're appearing as demons. I will appear with them and I will fight them. So now, we see that the intention of the Lord, the greed was to express his bala, express his strength. As a result of which, the four Kumaras, the circumstances arose in such a way that the four Kumaras decided to go to Vaikuntha. They cursed Jain Vijay and Jain Vijay are cursed to become demons. And as a result, we see in the, the next yugas, in Satya Yuga, Jain Vijay took the form of Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu. In the next yuga, they appeared as in Treta Yuga, Ravana and Kumbhakarna. Ravana and, Kumbhakar. mm -hmm. and in Dwapar Yuga, they appeared as Shishupal, Shishupal and Dantavakra. And in Kali Yuga, they appeared as Jagai and Madhai. Yeah. Madha. So, Not from me. right, yeah, yes, he did. yeah. <laughs> so, from the intention of God, from the intention of Vishnu, all of these things happened, right? His greed and Jain Vijay got cursed. We'll look into it in a bit detail further. But the Lord wished to fight, and that's why he appeared. Now, going back to the idea of greed. So, Varhadev had a greed. He had a greed. Uh, Vish, Mahavishnu had a greed to fight. And as a result, Jai Vijay got cursed so that he could fulfill that greed of fighting. And who became these demons? They are his servants. They are his closest servants, his aides. And they came. Now, Lord came as Varhadev. We'll go into the past times of Varhadev. Right? And then after Varhadev, this desire to fight was exhibited by Lord Ramachandra. 
it was exhibited by Krishna, mm -hmm. not exhibited by Mahaprabhu. In some sense, it was exhibited, but not completely. Mahaprabhu is a different category altogether, right? When Varadev came, at that time, he had another desire, another greed, that I want to express, I want to experience Vatsalya Prema. I want to have kids. I want to have that form of love. But it wasn't possible in the form of Varadev. So in the next incarnation at Narsinga, he was able to fulfill that with Prahlad Maharaj as a baby. And Prahlad, he could have that exchange. It wasn't his direct son, but he could have that exchange of that rasa. So that continued and Krishna and Ramachandra, they had their kids and that continued further. And Narsinga appeared, you know, we see the Ugra Narsinga and then Anugra Narsinga, the peaceful Narsinga, the yoga Narsinga, all forms of Narsinga appeared. Now, in Narsinga's Leela, he developed the greed to have friendship, Sakya Rasa. So Lord Narsinga couldn't fulfill that greed. So then in the next Treta Yuga, Ramachandra appeared and Ramachandra was able to fulfill the greed of friendship. And how did he fulfill? He developed friends. Who were his friends? Who were friends of Lord Ramachandra? Sugriva and Vibhishan, right? Sugriva and Vibhishan. So he practiced Sakya Rasa. So we are seeing that initially there was no greed. There was just the idea of saving the world. Then came the greed to fight. Then came the greed to, be, to have uh, children. Then came the greed to have friends. And in friendship, Sakya Rasa, we have two kinds of Rasas. We have friendship with awe and reverence. And we have friendship without awe and reverence. So Sugriva and uh, Vibhishana in Ramayana's Leela, Lord Ram's Leela, they were friendship with awe and reverence. It's called as Sambrahma. Sambrahma Sakya Rasa. That means that friendship with awe and reverence. But he couldn't ex experience, experience Vishwarambha. Vishrambha Sakya Rasa, which means friendship without awe and reverence. Friendship in such a way that you steal from his mouth, I'm stealing from your mouth. So Lord Ramachandra could not practice that. As a result, Krishna appeared and Krishna was able to fulfill that. Lord Ramachandra was also Maryada Purushottama. In the, in, the, in the Madhurya Rasa that he had, it was Swakiya Rasa. Swakiya means the, the pastimes through marriage, not outside of it. So there's two kinds of Madhurya Rasa, two kinds of loving relationship as a param, as a lover that we can have. We can have it through a marriage and we can have it outside of it. So through marriage is what Lord Ramachandra did. married Mother Sita and he had his pastimes with her. But then there's another kind of love, which is called as Parakiya love, which means that you are in love with somebody who is not in a married relationship with you, which is with Krishna and gopis. So Narsinga had Lakshmi Narsinga pastimes. So he even he couldn't have the Parakya Rasa mm -hmm. and Lord Ramachandra couldn't have Parakya Rasa and Lord Ramachandra couldn't have friendship without our reference. Mm -hmm. As a result, Krishna appeared. So now Krishna was able to fight. Krishna was able to have kids. So all the previous desires, creeds were being fulfilled. Krishna was able to have Parakya Rasa, he had paramour love with these gopis and he had friendship without awe and reference. All of his Madhumangal, Subal, Stoka Krishna, all of these, his coward boys, they would, they would not even consider him as God, right? They would, they would not consider him as God. It is described, the Acharyas say, that, the, that that illusion that Krishna is not God is both in, is in material world as in, it's, it's in spiritual world. In the material world, we think we are gods or there's no God or Krishna is not God. And that's how we lead our life as masters. In the spiritual world, it's the same illusion that Krishna is not God. He's our friend. So that same desire, that same mindset is there in both the worlds. So Krishna Leela happened. And in Krishna Leela, Krishna was able to fulfill these pastimes and fulfill his greed. And then finally, we had our Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We had the Viraha pastimes where Krishna experienced it, but not fully. The separation was not fully experienced. And so Mahaprabhu came and Rupa Goswami describes in Ujjwal Nila Mani that there's all kinds of viraha, Purva Raga viraha, Mana viraha, Prema Vaichitya viraha. So the separation, all kinds of separations were experienced. And that's how Mahaprabhu became his, he performed his pastimes. We say Krishna is omnipotent at times, right? Krishna knows everything, but that's not true. Krishna is not omnipotent because he doesn't understand how Srimati Radharani loves him. He doesn't understand how he is loved by his devotees. He doesn't understand what is so special in his beauty. So he's not omnipotent. He becomes omnipotent after he comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because then he has understood it all. 
So really, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the culmination of all the desires, all the greed, all the knowledge of Sri Krishna. That's the highest form of expression of the divine that we can ever see is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that's the culmination of all these creeds. The point being that it started with a greed that the Lord had. And this goes on. The references for these, uh, I'll give these references from different places that I've been reading these. So it started with the greed. And so Varadev, we see it, he comes early on in this stage, right? When the Lord had the desire to fight and Jaya Vijaya and the pastimes came about. So the idea was that the greed of the Lord, as opposed to the material greed, it's a spiritual greed. It's a greed to fight, to relish these pastimes. And as a result, Jaya Vijaya took their pearls. So now let's go into dive deep into that story. Um, now, Jaya and Vijaya. So Jaya and Vijaya, they decided they were cursed by the Kumaras. Jay and Vijay are here. And when Jay and Vijay um, decided to come into the material world, in different yugas, in different time periods, they took different births. So we saw in Satya Yuga, they appeared as Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu. They were sons of, who were Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu? Who were their parents? Kashyap and Diti. And Diti. So Kashyap and Diti. So Kashyap is a great sage, right? Great sage. And Kashyap... Um, Manu, uh, sorry, Daksha. Daksha had two daughters. So Daksha had two daughters, Aditi and Diti. And they gave it to Kashyapa so that you can marry. So the sons of Aditi became Adityas or demigods. And sons of Diti became uh, demons. So Diti is, so the word Deitya in Sanskrit literally means demons. So they are the sons of Diti. And so two of his sons were Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu. Now what's the story of their birth? Now, Kashyapa sage was a great sage, was always engaged in his meditation. So now we are seeing it started with the greed of the Lord. As a result, Jaya Vijay got cursed. And now they're coming into the material world. Now at that point, what happens? Lord Kashyapa, sage Kashyapa is busy in his meditation. And his wife, Diti, she has these lusty desires. She said that, I want these desires to be satisfied. And she goes near Kashyapa. And she says, Prabhu, Prabhu, I'm having these desires. Let's fulfill them. And Kashyapa, being the wise sage he is, he said that the time is not right. This is not the ideal time. This is the time of the night, time of the evening. A union at this time will create beings, will bring invite jivas into your womb that will create havoc in the society. Because it is the time where Lord Shiva and his followers are roaming the universe. His friends who are goblins, his friends who are hobgoblins, his friends who are spirits, they are roaming the world. You will invite them. There is actually a process, a ceremony to be performed. And through that ceremony, we should invoke uh, any living entity. These ceremonies are called as samskaras, right? How many samskaras are there in, in total? How many samskaras, these ceremonies, do we have to perform in a, in a human lifetime? is 16 actually, is 16 samskaras. So the first one is called as the Garbhadan samskara, which is at the time of conception, before conception. It's even prenatal samskaras. So this is before somebody, before a child is conceived, we have to perform these samskaras. Srila Prabhupada said that if you have, ever want to have kids, make sure that you chant at least 50 rounds of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra before you start even thinking of that. You have to perform all these sacrifices. So you invoke the right living entity, a living entity, who wants to expand in their bhakti. Otherwise, it can go haywire. Then there is the Pumsavan samskara. Then there is the simhun, the, the hair parting samskara. Then child is born. Then there is the jatakarma samskara, the baby rituals. Then namakarna samskara, we give the name to the child. Mm -hmm. Then there is nishkrama samskara, the first outing of the baby. Then there is anna prashna. Sometimes we see at the temples that anna prashna samskaras are performed where food is fed, grains are fed to the babies and some acharyas and maharajas feed that. Then Chula Karma Samskara, the shaving of the head is performed. Then there is Karna Veda Samskara, piercing of the ear lobes. Then educational samskaras. Then there is Vidya Ramba Samskara, how to get a child to go to school, learning the first alphabet. Then Upanayan Samskara, where the sacred thread is given. Then there is Veda Ramba Samskara, where you, the child starts to learn the Vedas. Then there is the Godan Samskara, the shaving of the beard, the donation of the cows. Then there is Samvartan Samskara. You are done with your student life. Then there is Vivaha Samskara, you get married. And then there is Antyeshti Samskara, when you die. So there are all these Samskaras that are to be performed. So Sage Kashyapa is telling uh, Diti that it can't happen right now. 
you have to wait for the auspicious moment and then we should engage um, and then through our union a child would be conceived but didi was lusty and as a result sage kashyap has described that he got flinched it happens again in seventh canto and bhagavatam we see that sage kashyap got flinched again when didi wanted indra to be killed after hiranyakashyap and hiranyaksha killed and as a result who was born what was the name of the demon uh, oh the oh the demon uh -huh. answer to be found towards the end of the class <laughs> okay uh -huh. so the point being diti was very lusty and uh -huh. kashyapa was not strong enough vritrasura vritrasura is different but it's in the same past times so diti was the point being diti was lusty and kashyapa was not strong enough to control her lust and kashyapa as a result he gave it up and because of their union it was in the, at an auspicious time in the night and see how the circumstances arrange in such a way that the greed of the lord is still being fulfilled that two children are born and these are hiranyaksha and hiranyakashipu when they were it is said that when they were in the womb of diti there were rains of blood and pus in the sky they were born with an iron armor almost around their bodies they were such powerful children and diti would sometimes think that oh what have i done how did i ask these these demoniac entities to to live in my womb and they would say mother what's wrong mother we are so powerful mother you'll see mother when we come out and then they come out and they name them hiranyaksha so hiranya means gold and aksha means eyes that means hiranyaksha was a person who was always looking for gold in everything that he wanted to do which means that he was always searching for gold always searching for money always searching for to fulfill his lust and to fulfill his desires and then hiranya kashipu so hiranya again means gold and kashipu means bed means he would cover cover everything in gold around his house see sleep in gold wake up in gold brush his teeth with gold just just living a life full of gold the idea being that gold is considered in the first canto of shrimad bhagavatam as as almost yellow stool it is described that gold is like yellow stool and that's where kali purusha lives it's given that in kali yuga gold when we see the gold standard of everything the gold it's not gold standard it's a stool standard for us <laughs> so they are they were always looking for wealth and that's how hiranyakashipu and hiranyaksha are born and now when they are born they start performing their their crazy activities those both the brothers they start tormenting people they start damaging things they start challenging people demigods are afraid and demigods are running away from them and so we see that their craziness is increasing in the world right and what happens as their craziness increases hiranyaksha right the hiranyaksha what what does he do he goes to vibhavari vibhavari is a place of lord varuna dev so he is going to hiranyaksha what he would do to impress his brother they both got kind of immortality boons from brahma both of them we know the famous story of hiranyakashipu where he asked brahma that make me immortal brahma said i can't make you immortal i am not immortal how can i make you immortal so he was an intelligent he was um, an interesting character he tried to trick brahma around he said that okay if you can't make me immortal why don't you give me the power that i won't be killed during the day and i won't be killed during the night so that means that okay that means that i'll be immortal then he says give me the power that i won't be killed by anything living i won't be killed by anything dead and brahma is like okay tathastu you have the power then he says give me the power that i won't be killed on the land or in the sky then brahma said okay you have the power then he said give me the power that i won't be killed inside or outside brahma said tathastu so he tried to trick brahma into giving him this power that he'll be immortal if not this way then the other way if you don't give me directly then i'll ask you in such a way that i will get immortality and of course we know lord narsingha deva appeared and he killed him in such a way that it wasn't in the day it wasn't in the night it was at the twilight time so twilight at 6 pm it's not day it's not night he killed with his nails now the nails are not living neither dead right he killed him right outside the pillar so the pillar is not inside the house not outside the house so lord narsingha deva fulfilled all of these he said that let no man kill me let no animal kill me and narsingha deva is half man half lion 
So Krishna knows. I mean, if you try to trick Krishna, he'll trick you back. Badly. <laughs> Similarly, Hiranyaksha also asked Lord Brahma for immortality. So this was Hiranyakashipu. And he also got, there was some other story about it, but he gets immortality too, in some way, seemingly. So they think that they're supreme. So Hiranyaksha would go and torment the universes. He'll go here, he would go there. And the final, it said, right, that the straw that broke the camel's back, that the final point where his, his, um, his crazy, craziness would about to come to an end was he went, goes to Vibhavari. Now, Vibhavari is near the lower planetary systems. There's a place where Lord Varuna Dev, the Lord of water, the deity of water, he lives. And he goes and he is carrying his mace and his club and he's like, oh, Varuna, want to fight? And... And Varuna understands that I can kill this demon. I mean, so Varuna says that, no, no, Prabhu, I, I'm not equal to you. You are so supreme. You are so great. Who can fight you? And Hiranyaksha understands, no, no, you can fight. I know you are very powerful. No, no, Prabhu, I don't have any power to fight you. Why don't you challenge Vishnu? Vishnu can kill you. Vishnu can fight with you. Vishnu will give you a challenge. He says, where is this Vishnu? So Varuna said, go to Narada. Narada, with Narada. Narada knows where Vishnu is. And so Hiranyaksha goes to Narada. He's like, hey, Narada, where is Vishnu? Where is Vishnu? And Narada tells him, oh, Vishnu lives in Vaikuntha. You know, you should, you, you should search for him. And so Hiranyaksha goes on his search. I'm taking a slight tangent. So now Hiranyaksha is going searching for Lord Vishnu. While at the same time, while at the same time, Lord Brahma, he has his days, he has his nights, right? We see that the Kali Yuga has... How many years does Kali Yuga have? What's the duration of Kali Yuga? 432,000. Exactly. 432,000 years is the duration of Kali Yuga. This is this time period we are in, out of which 5,000 years have passed. We have 427,000 years remaining in Kali Yuga. You multiply it by two, it becomes Dwapara Yuga, the, the time period before this. You multiply Kali Yuga by three, it becomes Treta Yuga, in which Lord Ramachandra came. You multiply it by four, it becomes Satya Yuga. So that's the duration of these four Yugas. Now you add them together, that becomes one Chatur Yuga. You multiply it by thousand, that becomes one day of Brahma. You multiply it by thousand, that becomes one night of Brahma. You multiply that by 360, that becomes one year of Brahma. And you multiply it by 100, that becomes one, the lifetime of Brahma. It comes out to be 300 trillion trillion years and 40 billion. And 40 billion. There you go. And if you want calculations after this class, I'm happy to go down and do the math with everyone. So this calculation, so that's the age of Brahma. Interestingly, modern science also says that this universe is 155 trillion years old. It is that Brahma is also 50 years old right now, 50 in his 51st year. And in each day of Brahma, Lord Chaitanya appears. Anyway, separate discussion. The point being, in a Brahma's day, and in a Brahma's night, there's a partial dissolution that takes place. So in partial dissolution, what happens? I wish I had a board or something. Anyway, we have this universe, right? So Brahma, and we have 14 planetary systems. We heard that there are 14 planetary systems. Our scientists said that there are nine planets and we are so happy. We have 14 planetary systems and each system has billions of planets. So we have these planetary systems from up to down. We have Satya Loka on the top hundreds and thousands of planets there, then Jana Loka, Mahara Loka, and then Bhuvar, Swar Loka, Bhuvar Loka, Bhu Loka. Bhu Loka is our three plane in which the Bhagavatam describes fifth canto that we have Jambu Dvipa, Bharat Kanda, then we have all these Dvipas and all these islands. And then we have um, a salt water ocean. So we see the salt water ocean on earth. It's connected to that. Then we have an ocean of ghee. Then we have an ocean of butter. Then we have an ocean of alcohol. There are these concentric oceans and then you go below that, and then you have subterranean planetary systems. Atala, Vitala, Tala, Atala, Rasatala, Mahatala, Patala. And below the Patal is the hellish planets, right around that time, where you have Kumbi Pa, Krimi Bhoj, where different kinds of crimes, you have given punishments for different kinds. The Dante's Inferno, the description of hell is that, and this description of hell from fifth canto. So anyway, this is the universe. And below the planetary systems is Lord Ananta, and below that is Garbhodaka Ocean. So Garbhodaka Ocean is an ocean in which a Vishnu lives. What is he called? Garbhodaka Shai Vishnu, which means who lies in that Garbhodaka ocean from the navel lotus comes and it goes all the way on the top where Brahma sits and along the stem of the lotus is all these planetary systems. At every night of Brahma, 
a partial dissolution takes place. So at the very first night of Brahma, when Brahma is just creating and we see from the Bhagavata, he doesn't know what's going on and he prays and the Lord breathes and the Vedas come and he offers his prayers, the famous Govinda Madhipurusham prayers, all of Brahma's prayers we see. The very first time when dissolution happened, so a partial dissolution takes place and at the, every night of Brahma. And a full dissolution takes place at the end of his lifetime. But this material universe is completely eradicated and Mahavishnu recreates it after that. But every night, some of these planetary systems get submerged. So what happens? Brahma's night is coming and suddenly the water is rising and rising. And so only three lokas remain on the top of it. So only Satya, Jana and Mahar Loka remain. Everything else gets covered in water. That's why in the Bhagavatam, if you see third canto where these verses are, and we'll look at some verses. When Lord Vara appears, only the three, only the people from these three planetary systems are offering their prayers. No one else. That's because everything else is submerged. Actually, it's a minor point that Vishwanath Chakravarti describes. So all the all 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 of it is covered now, and only three planetary systems remain. At that point, the Earth also went into the ocean. So when Earth goes into the ocean, and Lord Brahma is like, "Oh no, that's the Karma Bhumi. That's where Bharat Varsha is. That's where all the pastimes happen." How, how in the world did it get inside the ocean? What do I do? So at that point, he prays. And he's wondering, what should I do, all the demigods? And at that point, he's, something happens in his nose. And somebody comes out, pops. And the size of a, half the size of a thumb. Like, what is that? You know, sometimes you get a beetle or something in your nose and it comes out. And Brahma is confused. What, what just happened? And boom, it takes the size of a mountain. And that's Varahadev. And he goes inside. And he picks up earth and he brings it back. So in every yuga, before Lord Vishnu's greed, he would just come, pick up the earth and put it back and he would be done. He would let it float and he would go. That's why it's called as a Varaha Kalpa, var Shweta Varaha. Mm -hmm. So there are two Varaha Devs, before the greed and after the greed. So before the greed is Shweta Varaha. He comes in a white form, he picks up the earth, puts it back and does his job. And he does it every yuga. Every yuga, there are some minor differences. For example, sometimes people get confused that Lord Narsingha's pastimes are different. We said that he appeared in Ahobilam. Sometimes it is said that Ahobilam is in a lower planetary place. Sometimes it is in South India. There's a place called Ahobilam where there's a temple of Lord Narsingha. Dev. Sometimes it is said in Mayapur, there's a lake called Narsingha Palli Lake, where Lord Narsingha Dev went to wash his hands. So some people wonder, how does this happen? The idea is that in every yuga, the Lord changes a few details. He performs the same pastimes, but he tweaks a few things here and there, like incremental. You know, sometimes we have seasons of Superman or Aquaman, and from one season to another season, there are some changes. From each Spider-Man, we see something comes up. Each Spider-Man has a different look. <laughs> so the Lord does something differently in each pastime. So Narsingha Dev, that's why in one pastime, he actually goes to Navadvip, and he actually washes his hands there in that lake, and that lake becomes Narsingha Pali. When people go on the Navdi Dham Parikrama, they go to that lake. In other yuga, in other time period, he appears in South India. That's where you have the Ahubilam, famous temple there. You can see the pillar there. In, in some other yuga, he appeared in a lower planetary system. So Varaha Dev, before the greed of Lord to fight, he would just come, pick up the earth and put it there. However, this time it was different because this time he's, he came here and he came in a red form. He appeared from the nose of Brahma. Now a question being that why does he appear from the nose of Brahma? He could appear from, he could appear anywhere. Why does he choose nose of Brahma? Why not? Why not? Yeah, why is the reason? <laughs> Any thoughts? In Ayurveda, in Ayurveda, the sense of smell is associated with earth. earth. What does, what was Lord Varahadev looking for? He's looking for the earth. So that's why he chose to appear from the nose, the nostril of Brahma, so that he can search for the earth. And why does he appear in a hog form? Why not anyone else? Exactly. He has to go down. Who goes inside and finds things and comes up? It's a hog. So that's why he appears in the filth of Patal and all this nonsense. He goes in and he brings up the earth. So that's why he appears as a hog, but he appears as a white hog. But after the greed, going back to the greed, he appears in a red form and he's searching. So now going back to our previous story, this we connect the two together. Hiranyaksha was told by Varuna that, why don't you go see Vishnu? He says, where do I find Vishnu? Go see Narada. Okay, Narada, where is Vishnu? He said, just look around and go to the Vaikuntha, go here. And then Narada says, no, no, go inside the water. So this is at the night of Brahma, partial dissolution has happened. 
and this time mother earth went down because of partial dissolution and also because these demons started harassing mother earth so much they were drilling just like we are doing right now we think we are drilling the earth and we are discovering something but it's actually harassment it's a demoniac tendency to cause so much harm to nature that's what these demons were also doing oh it's for scientific advance you know it's for this it's for geothermal energy no you fools you are causing so much trouble to mother earth so mother earth was already down because partial dissolution and because these rascals were causing havoc and at that time narada said actually lord vishnu is there searching for the earth so hiranyaksha he goes with his club and his mace and his dress up and he is is inside water and he sees lord vishnu picking up mother earth on his tusk as a hog rakta in a red form this time and is bringing her up and hiranyaksha challenges and i want to read what hiranyaksha says to to lord vishnu so what does hiranyaksha ch- says an am- amphibious beast oh best of the dam- demigods dressed in the form of a boar the earth belongs to us the inhabitants of the lower regions and so i cannot allow you to take it away from my presence you rascal today i shall enliven my kinsmen by killing you when you fall down dead with your skull smashed by my mace the demigods and rishis who offer you oblations and sacrifice will also cease to be just like a tree that can no longer live without roots so as lord varadev varadev wasn't paying attention to him like keep on speaking he's still taking his earth and he's taking his time and the demigods are offering prayers and he's just in a meditative mood hiranyaksha again roared like you ignored me are you not ashamed of yourself for for running away after being challenged by an adversary there's nothing that is reproachable for shameless creatures like you then lord varadev was still calm he's still going up still placing placing earth he puts the mother earth earth is floating the demigods are singing and hiranyaksha just imagine <laughs> somebody who thinks he is very powerful and he challenges you and you ignore him and such an indignation he was like who is this person who what what kind of is thought so he's he's angry at that point and the lord is being flowered and then the lord actually looks at him and replies indeed um we are creatures of the jungle and are searching for hunting dogs like you one who is freed from the entanglement of death has no fear from the loose talk in which you are indulging for you are bound by the laws of death now give up your foolish talk and attempt to kill me one may be very proud but he does not deserve a seat in an assembly if he fails to fulfill his promise and the lord kind of enrages him further and then the fighting begins and it's an amazing fight um shila gaur govind maharaj used to say that people who don't relish the shrimad bhagavatam will go for movies and cinema to try to find enjoyment outside of it but if you see this fight scene <laughs> the mace fights begin so they are both against each other hitting with them with mace maces the lord brings it down then he hits the lord on the face then the lord punches him back and then they go for each other's forehead and they're bumping their foreheads they're putting each other down then the clubs are come out and the clubs are hitting and then we see the maneuver we see in the matrix the bullet time maneuver the lord performed it years ago the maneuvers are happening and the the demigods described it as two bulls fighting for a cow mother earth sometimes is also referred as a cow actually because king prithu actually milked the mother earth as a cow and we see as mother earth in the cow in shrimad bhagavatam in the first canto itself where she's crying and she meets parikshit so two bulls as if fighting for mother earth it seems like they're fighting they're going at each other and brahma finally starts to get worried because hiranyaksha hits the lord so hard that his club falls away and brahma is like oh lord are you okay please please lord please kill him please we don't want to see you hurt like this but the lord is fulfilling his greed he's relishing his fighting it's with his servant in one sense from one realization from the other it's this demoniac son of hiran of, of diti and kashyap and the fighting goes on and then the lord clubs get slipped now hiranyaksha sees that the club is slipped from the lord's hand he wants to be a good fighter a good enemy so he said you know what go pick up your thing i i'll wait for you and the lord gets even enraged that who are you to tell me to pick up my weapon and so the lord invokes sudarshan chakra at that point but he doesn't use it on hiranyaksha he invokes and at that point as soon as the lord picks it up hiranyaksha was a powerful uh, mage a magician and at that time he created this illusion in such a way that uh, that all these demons were circling the lord and the entire universe was being flooded he created all these visuals and 
and the lord is confused what's going on the lord is of course he's not confused but he's just playing a part of it and then suddenly lord throws his sudarshan chakra the illusion gets vanished and then hiranyaksha comes again he was disappeared in that side he appears and then the lord sucker punches hiranyaksha so hard that his eyes bulge out his hair stand up <laughs> and his hair is scattered all over the place and at that point then the demigods start prayer so it's again the three lokas these demigods they begin worshiping that oh lord varaha you have appeared and you have killed this de- demon and you have established madara to her place and as a result of which lord varaha dev the rakta varaha form of the lord he defeats hiranyaksha and he establishes uh, the earth to its rightful place and so today is the appearance day of this particular pastime of how he appears from the nose of brahma and performs all of these pastimes in previous yugas just to deliver mother earth and in that the yugas to fight her in action and that's what we are celebrating now what does it mean for us that that the lord appears and performs these pastimes it means that the pure devotion that lives in our heart is covered by dirt filth all kinds of negativity so the idea of prayer that acharya say to pray to lord varaha to lift that pure devotion that is in our heart in the darkness of our heart, rise it up so that it can be established and we can truly establish our relationship with him and that is the appearance of lord varaha thank you very much hari krishna any thoughts questions before we go into the bonus <laughs> the bonus content for today thoughts questions comments anyone online reflections I appreciate your reference to Gordon and Maharaj. But, uh, yeah, so we all have a propensity for adventure and, uh, and violence and, and like that. And, and so, uh, yeah, so it's, it's been in the complete pure form. Yeah, same with the, the, the world and so fun with like, all, all the losses of the relationship. And, you know, so like some, some would say, like, uh, <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> it's a, uh, I'll speak loud enough so they can hear. Yes. All right, Krishna. You know, said, oh, this is unbelievable. This is like, uh, yeah, how can I... but then it, to me, it makes sense actually. Yeah. Enhances trust and faith. That like, if we're speaking about the appearance and pastimes of the screen, the, the screen, it makes sense to me that it would be more far out and wild than any Hollywood plot, mm-hmm. right? Because you can go to any, what, Spielberg, this, that, any high Hollywood plot, and all these, you know, brilliant you know, writers and this and that. So it makes sense that if we're talking about the past and stream personality of God, it would be far more far out than that. And here we have it here. So the Supreme personality of Godhead appears as a pig coming out from the nose of the four-headed creators. Like, yeah, I mean, that would, <laughs> that would make sense. Wow. Thank you for that realization, Prabhu. I totally relate that the pastimes of the Lord are so magnificent, so wild. And Guru Maharaj sometimes says that he was distributing books in New York City once. And, um, and there was a drunk guy on the street just hobbling and walking around. And he ended up at the book table somehow. And they were talking to people distributing books. And this guy picks up Brahma Samhita. And there's a picture of Lord Mahavishnu and lord garbo dakshay vishnu and then the lotus coming out and brahma sitting and he reads to looks at the picture and he looks he says this stuff is so weird it has to be true <laughs> and then he goes away <laughs> so this is what we see here that that the pastimes are so wild i mean we imagine that somebody has created sometimes i used to remember when i would watch the lord of the rings movies these fight scenes it's almost it seems like they have just taken it away from ramayana and mahabharata when all these armies come all these different the chinas these armies are coming and they are just weird looking and the overlooking people they are just right in these movies so it's really the inspiration is from these and if we truly relish these past times then there's really no need to go outside of it so thank you Sher- for sharing your realization yeah we should make more movies from the bible that's right those will be very popular yes <laughs> mm. Yeah, the new Mahabharata, making something in Mahabharata on the Bhagavata. Yeah, the customs of the world be true. I was thinking also these stories are so far out and crazy to imagine, but the um, 
the reason behind it is what makes it relatable. Like you're saying the internal reason of God's intention to heal greed. It's so, in some ways, so human relatable. That for mm. me, like, okay, all this crazy stuff makes sense because well, the motivation of God I can relate to mm. and see it play out is like quite amazing. Mm. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, it always comes down to he's a person. Just like we have our desires and thoughts and we do actually our intentionality. Um, there's a famous author called Richard Solverman. He founded the TEDx conferences. He's a famous information architect. He said, understanding precedes action. So our understanding, our intentionality precedes what we do. It's the same thing for the Lord. He doesn't do willy-nilly anything. There are reasons and there are countless of reasons. I mean, if we imagine the God and Leela or any pastime, there are reasons, even the past, even the reasons that Krishna Das Kaviraj describes. Now you go into uh, the descriptions of the Goswamis, the Goswami literature, and then we find out more and more layers of Mahaprabhu's desires and intentions and why he appears as Mahaprabhu. The real reasons for what is Vipralamba Tattva? Why does he go to Jagannath Puri? Why does he shave his head? Why does he take his sannyas? Every single thing that the Lord does has multiple reasons and host of reasons all the way going down to his own desires and proving that he's a person. That he's a person. So when people say that God is not a person, he's the universe or he's this, Srila Prabhupada used to get so angry, so angry that these mayavadis, mm. because imagine he, you love somebody, somebody who's a person who's doing all these things. He loves you unconditionally. You're telling him that, that, is a, that it's a non-person. Such a crazy offense that sometimes devotees don't understand why was Srila Prabhupada so hard against these impersonalists. This is the reason why that you are that he is the he is the supreme and you're telling him that he's not. It's just light, it's just energy. I mean, how dare you? Can you speak like that? So that's the reason why that we see the more we understand intentionality of the Lord, we understand his personality. Um, the words, the word that comes to my mind is for Rupa Goswami they said Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam, right? Mano Bhishtam means that somebody who understands the mana, the mind, mana abhishta. The mind. So Rupa Goswami is considered that he would understand the mind of Chaitanya. When Rupa Goswami, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would see him, it's like, Rupa, you understand me. You get me. Because you understand truly the heart of a person. You hear them or you understand what's happening. Similarly, by hearing Lord out, understanding his desires, we see, we feel more connected. We understand the Mano Vishta. Srila Prabhupada, sometimes we, he would say, some of his disciples, such as Tamal Krishna Maharaj and these people, Prabhupada said, they, they understand me. Without Prabhupada asking something, they would go and do something. And Tamal Krishna Maharaj created the Radha Damodha traveling Sankirtan party. And he lined up hundreds of brahmacharis. Each would come and offer a rose to Prabhupada's feet. And Prabhupada said, Tamal, you know what is preaching. This is what I mean by preaching. And hundreds of people just coming out and becoming brahmacharis and devotees. So anyway, the idea being understanding the mind of the Supreme is very important. So thank you for sharing that. Okay, thanks. Um, the, the, um, often... Prabhupada would appreciate like those who are attracted to the impersonal aspect of the absolute. There's places in Bhagavad Gita that Prabhupada says there's no conflict between personalism and impersonalism. And I think one lecture is maybe 66 New York, and he talking to people coming to the first center, even before the first center. He goes, Yeah, it's like in India, the, like the Mela, the Kumbha Mela. He gets sannyasis coming, come, some come from the impersonal, come from some from bhakti. It really doesn't matter. But sometimes he makes the distinctions, it doesn't. So and sometimes he's quite accommodating and celebrating the diversity, different angles of appreciation of the absolute. Mm -hmm. And where it becomes like fiery angry is when okay, one thing is if you're committed to dedicate to the impersonal aspect and they either personally or philosophically, and they they deny the possibility mm. of the personal aspect, the mm. personal qualities. Mm. And they would say, oh, well, that's that's just Maya. Mm. That's that's what, because it's one thing to appreciate all aspects mm. of the absolute personal Bhagavan and then mm. Brahma Devaji. Okay. But when those attracted to, to, to the impersonal, when they say, oh, actually, Krishna's form is Maya. Actually, mm. in the ultimate sense, mm. the Supreme has has no no relationships, mm. no no form, no eyes. Mm. That's that's when we say like like mm. Prabhupada's personally personally mm. insulted that. Mm. This is my best friend you're talking about. Mm. True. Wow. Thank you for sharing that nuance, Prabhu. That's very true. Uh, that that yes, there is the impersonal aspect of the Lord and we worship and we understand. But it's when that becomes the reality and then Krishna is just 
a manifestation of that reality. That's, you're right. Uh, I also remember a conversation of Prabhupada where um, Siddha Swarup Maharaj asked Prabhupada that what's the difference between a Brahmavadi and a Mayavadi? Mm -hmm. And Prabhupada said, a Brahmavadi is a person who understands that yeah, there's impersonal reality. And he's just happy with that. But a Mayavadi is a person who says that that's the only reality. Mm -hmm. And those are the real rascals, <laughs> as Prabhupada would say. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Ready for some bonus content? Anyone else before we go to the bonus content? Okay. <laughs> I, I share something. Yes, please. Hare Krishna and Nico here. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate the class. It's uh, very, very beautiful. And I'm, yeah, I'm so relishing these pastimes because this is like the first time I'm hearing about any of this. And I, I love how it is. Uh, it's better than any any Hollywood movie or anything. Yeah, like the story with the the Kumaras uh, cursing the gatekeepers at Vaikuntha to come as demons, and then Krishna saying or Vishnu saying, if a servant commits a crime, the master takes the blame. So then that's that's what brought Vishnu to the material world. And then yeah, this idea of of greed and material greed and spiritual greed and and how everything in this world is um, uh, stems from source, stems from Krishna. And, and yeah, so like we experience greed because God has greed. And then, yeah, God's uh, story about the greed, um, the greed to fight. And that's why that's why all these stories happen <laughs> is, is, is his greed to fight. And then what I'm really taking away from it is his greed kept evolving. So it's like the greed to fight. And then the greed for friendship um, with uh, Nishin Hadev, or I guess the greed for that relationship with a, with a child. And then the greed uh, to have a friendship with Lord Rama. And then the greed uh, to experience love uh, without marriage is, is Krishna. And, um, and I'm sure there's more to it, all of that. And then I'm just reflecting like the greed to, to be a devotee as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And that, that really gives me a, a lot of inspiration to to endeavor to become a devotee. So thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Nico. Wow, you just summarized the entire class. Thank you so much. This is brilliant. Thank you for sharing your reflection. Yeah. I have something. Yes. Well, we didn't read a lot. We did say one sentence about the Brahma Vadi and the demigods' prayers. Like we did this and then we did that. And I and I read this section. Of the, of the Bhagavatam, where there's like, you know, a lot of times when there's, it's time to praise God, it's pages of uh, verses, you know, many prayers. And um, this just a small mm. realization that I had, because mm. actually, I, I, you know, like my conception of prayer growing up, well, I didn't have it, I didn't have prayer growing up. Mm -hmm. um, but still, the conception was to ask for things, mm. you know, mm. like, please. Mm. Um, and uh, and so it's been this switch to like prayer being like praise, you know, like going on and on praising. Mm. And um, I have no, I don't have any block, I don't have any problem with that. But I just it's conceptually like the idea of even now that my prayer is usually self-centered. I mean, like when I think of prayer, um, it's not as much as like you were this and you were that. And you were this. Anyway, but I had something connect with me mm. with cultivating devotion to a person to the person of Godhead. <laughs> that um, as an expression of devotion. Now I'm starting. To, I started to realize that today like, it would logically be um, expressing um, like empathy. I, I connected with the way that prayer is expressed many times in these in these stories and pastimes. It's um, empathy. You did this, and you have this quality. You were that. It's just entering the Lord's world completely mm, and leaving wow. your own self behind. So I had that connection, even though it's not that, but it occurred to me that it was it's empathy. Wow. Yeah. You know. So beautiful. Thank you for sharing. That that's true. Yeah. Sometimes I used to be in the same boat that okay, all these prayers, and the Bhagavatam is filled with prayers, and some of these prayers are wild. I mean, how they're praying, especially. I mean. Queen Kunti's prayers or Prithu Maharaj and it's like, wow. But you're right, it's the idea of empathy that entering their world, um, truly connecting with them, and that's really becomes glorification prayer. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada wrote once in one of his magazines that 
about Krishna and his baby pastimes, that why does Krishna appear as a baby? And he gives the example that, that when we see Krishna as father, then the idea becomes that father, give me this, father, give me that. But when he appears as a baby, then you don't ask things from a baby. Baby, give me that. No, baby, take this. Take this from me. Here, it is for you. So as a child, it brings up that mood from us. That, okay, it's for you. It's for you. So that's also a distinction just to add to that. But the empathy also becomes more, that, okay, it's for the child. It's for him. Uh, okay. Uh, Gajendra, I see your hand up. Thank you for sharing that. Hi, Christian Prabhu. Uh, I'm, I'm nothing less extremely grateful for class this morning. Um, I was, I'm sort of wondering, and so in these pastimes of the Lord, you know, where Baraha is coming and different forms are being assumed. I mean, these are, these are pastimes and we don't think of the Lord and the devotees as being ignorant. So I'm wondering as these, as these pastimes are playing out, I'm, I'm trying to understand what their, what their reference is. So it's just like, well, I'm, so I'm a, I'm a form of Vishnu, uh, Krishna, and I'm fighting these demons who have this other identity as a gatekeeper and it's all pastime. But as they're doing this, is it, is it, is it sort of like the method version for like actors where they're just becoming very immersed in their role so that there's the type of forgetfulness almost like like often the example of mother you showed is used like oh it's yoga maya she needs to see that you know krishna is her dependent little baby who's going to die if she doesn't feed him and is is it is is there some type of yoga maya that supplies to the lord as well where he's sort of forgetting that oh this is my gatekeeper and i've got to kill this because he's really a demon i've got to save the situation Wow, thank you. First of all, thank you for your insightful question. Yeah, you're right. That if it's there's this another reality that we know, then how can we believe this reality? Right? It's this what comes to my mind is look at ourselves. We are not these bodies, we are not these identities, but we live our, lead our life fully with, with living that we are this body and we are this. The example of Gopa Kumar comes from Brihad Bhagavata Amrita. When he goes to a spiritual world, he's traveling and he wants to see everything. And and people are calling him by his actual name. I think it was Swarupa, if I recall. Swarupa, Swarupa. And Gopal Kumar said, oh, who is that person? That's not me. I'm like, no, that's you. That's your identity in the spiritual world. And Gopal Kumar ca cannot recall anything. Because for him, the mindset, the idea, the identity is this Gopal Kumar identity. And similarly for us, we all have a spiritual name. Every single one of us. We all have a spiritual form, every single one of us. We all have a specific relationship with Krishna, a specific service, either in the Vaikuntha planets and in the Goloka planets, but none of us remember it. After the class gets over, we go back to our bodily identification and leader life. Right? They didn't like it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm just kidding. Um, the, the reason that we all have these identities and we go back to these identities so it's similarly, when Krishna performs these, these pastimes, Jain Vijay don't recall at all that they are Jain Vijay. They are demons. They're just born because it's a material form that they have taken. It's after they are killed, they're like, oh, we were Jain Vijay. Oh, just like after, if we become 100% purified in this lifetime, we realize at the end of our life, oh, I thought I led my entire life as this male, Indian male, Chinese, American, whatever it is. But we are these spiritual beings. So similarly for Jain Vijayan, as far as the Lord is concerned, yes, the Yoga Maya acts on him and he forgets. He forgets that, um, that I am the Supreme. Once in a while it would come. Lord Chaitanya's pastime is a classic example. And that's connected to our bonus content. So thank you for that question. I know Casey, you have your hand up. Uh, but I'll go into the first bonus content and then we can take your question. Would that be okay? I don't have a question. I just wanted to say thank you and that I love the class, Rasa. Oh, thank you, Casey. <laughs> okay. So Gajendra, to, to take your question into the bonus content. So it was a nice segue, I guess. Um, that the Lord forgets by Yoga Maya's potency, but then he sometimes remembers also. And so the wow. bonus content is when Lord Chaitanya remembered that he is Lord Varahadev. <laughs> so in Chaitanya Bhagavat, Madhya Leela, her chapter, I'm going to just read a read a little bit from there, is Lord Chaitanya. So Lord Chaitanya, I mean, imagine, how many of you have been to Mayapur? 
let's make the Mayapur, right? So you've seen the yoga pit where Lord Chaitanya was born, and then a few doors down is Swarup Damodar's, and then a few doors down is Murari Gupta, he lives there. So Murari Gupta is, is Hanuman. So Murari Gupta was a doctor at that point, and he would take his notes and diaries, and he was a Hanuman Bhakta. So one time, one particular time, Lord Chaitanya was reading the Bhagavatam. He would read Bhagavatam to him. And he heard the pastimes of Lord Varahadev. And the moment he heard the pastimes of Lord Varahadev, he started roaring and rushed to Murari Gupta's house. And he had a special love for Murari Gupta, just like Lord Ramachandra has a special love for Hanuman. So he goes to Murari Gupta's house. And the Lord hurried past Murari Gupta, boar, boar, boar. And Murari Gupta said, what's going on with my Lord? And he entered the room, temple, temple room of Lord Vishnu. And he all took the form of Lord Varaha. Lord Chaitanya transformed himself into Varaha. And there was a pot of water and he lifted it and his tusk, he lifted it. And Murari Gupta just couldn't believe what was happening in front of his eyes. <laughs> And the Lord ordered to Murari Gupta, offer me prayers right now, Murari, offer me prayers. And Murari was dumbfounded. He couldn't believe what was going on. This is Chaitanya. This is Nimai who lives down the door. What has happened to him? He transformed into a boar. And then Murari is shaking, just shivering. He said, oh Lord, this is, I'm quoting directly. Uh, before Murari speaks, Lord says, speak up Murari, speak up. You do not have to fear. Don't you know my supreme identity? And trembling with fear, Murari pleaded, Oh Lord, you yourself know how to glorify yourself with prayers. Lord Ananda Shesha sits down with his thousands of foods and thousands of mouths, is reciting thousands of verses of Bhagavatam and glorifying you. And he cannot glorify even 1% of you. So who am I to glorify you? The Vedas come out, the Vedas describe, Lord, who am I to glorify you? So in this way, he's supplicating to the Lord. And there's beautiful prayers in Jaitanya Bhagavatam, this one. And Murari fell on the floor and the Lord, um, the Lord spoke out loudly. The Vedas have the audacity to say, I have no hands, no legs, no mouth and no eyes. There's a mischievous sannyasi who lives in Kashi who says that I, that I, I don't have this form. I'm formless. I'm this. He studies the Vedas. And as a result of this, he's affected by leprosy and he's, he's suffering. I am the Lord. I am the Lord of all sacrifices. I am Vishnu. Carefully hear my opinion. Then he goes on to describe his prayers that I accepted this incarnation of the board to lift the material world out of the oceans of nations. Know me to be the supreme goal of the Vedas. The purpose of my present incarnation is to propagate the congregational chanting of the holy name. In this and in other incarnations, I annihilate the miscreants and I protect the devotees. I cannot tolerate my devotees being tortured. This is not a lie, Murari. Listen attentively. In my Bohr incarnation, I lifted the earth. Mother Earth became impregnated by my touch. She gave birth to my son named Naraka or Pomasur, who was very strong and powerful. I gave my son all religious instructions. He became very pious, but due to the association of King Vena, he became a criminal and started cursing the devotees. My aggression or violence towards my devotees is totally intolerable to me. So I killed my son to protect my devotees. I'm re revealing all these confidential matters to you because you have been serving me for many births. And Murari Gupta started weeping with joy. And that ended the pastime of Lord Chaitanya. So Lord Chaitanya appeared in the Varaha Chaitanya form. So if you see Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, to answer your question, Gajendra, Lord Chaitanya would sometimes remember that he is God and he would perform like this or the Mahaprakash Leela in Chaitanya, Charitamrita, where he tells everyone, I am the Supreme, ask what you want. Sometimes while trembling in fear, all his limbs would go inside and he would become the Kurma Chaitanya. He would start looking like Lord Kurma. Sometimes he would be nursing the Dev. And they would, in Shriva Sangha, they would be sitting and people shout, lion, lion, lion. And Lord Chaitanya has become this lion. And as nursing is rolling. So sometimes he would remember. And then because of Yoga Maya, he would forget again. And so for Lord, Yoga Maya exists. And when devotees come, they forget completely. Jay and Vijay were not affected by material nature, but because they were so fully engrossed, they took birth, they took their life. As a result, they performed their pastimes without realizing that they are Jay and Vijay. And so that the Lord could really relish their pastimes. Bonus content number two. So that was from Chaitanya Bhagavat, Appearance of the Lord. There are nine islands in Navadvip. Do we know the nine islands of Navadvip? So Navadvip, that land is called Nava means nine and Dvip means islands. So the entire land of Mayapur is divided into nine islands. So there's Antardvip. And all these nine 
they, ref, they, ref, they refer to be nine processes of bhakti actually. So there's more deeper connection in the in the Braj Mandal Mahatma Bhai Bhakti Vinod Thakur, it's more described how that works. So in that dweep, there's one dweep. So there's Antar dweep, there's Shimanta dweep, there's Godruma dweep, Madhya dweep, Ritu dweep, Janu dweep, Modadruma dweep and Rudra dweep. So the Kola dweep, actually Kola means a boar and Kola dweep means the island of the boar. So in Mayapur, there's a place called the island of the boar. Today, it's there, Kola dweep. Devotees go there, Sarkamambulate, worship the deities. There's a Lord Vara temple. There was a Goswami there who used to worship the Lord who used to pray to the Lord. And the Lord appeared to him in a Varaha form, actually, while Jatanya Mahaprabhu was there. And the Lord appeared, and that Varaha deity is still worshipped there. And that's why that place is called Koladi, is uh, connected to Lord Varaha. So that was bonus content number two, that we have the presence of Lord Varaha Dev even up until today. Just, we know that God Lila is still going on today. And so the Kola Dweep is still there. And Lord Chaitanya appears as that. So to finally conclude, we started with, just to quickly summarize, we looked at the idea of an ex internal reason and an external reason. We looked at the internal and external reasons of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then we saw the idea of greed and how the greed moved from the greed to fire to the greed of Vatsalya Prema to greed of Sakya Rasa. Friendship with awe and reverence, friendship without awe and reverence, to Madhurya Leela with Swakiya Rasa, to Parakiya Rasa, and to experience the separation Viraha. And to experience this greed, Jay and Vijay took their forms, experience this greed, um, Sanat Kumaras got cursed, Jay and Vijay appeared, Diti became lusty, Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakashipu appeared. They had their amazing fight. The Lord killed them. The, rose, the Lord raised it up. And then they took their forms again as Shishupal and Dantavakra, Kumbhakarna and Ravana. And this way the Lord performed his pastimes, enjoyed his pastimes of Lord Vara. And the idea, the spiritual idea is that lift us from our ignorance that we, are, we have in our hearts. And we, we serve you and we discover that jewel. That is just, just like you raise Mother Earth, raise our consciousness also so that it can always remain at your lotus feet and not in the darkness of the material world. Om Tat Sat. Thank you for joining. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. And I'm, I'm really glad to be in your presence speaking on this auspicious day of the appearance of Lord Maharaj. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Lord Varadev ki jai. Hare Krishna. Nitai Gaur Premanande. Hari Hari Bhav. Thank you. Thank you online also, everyone. Nice to see you, Casey, Kelly. I'm so glad to see you all. Yeah. Lots of friends. Lots of friends, yeah. Lots of friends. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to drive away. Not in the memory. <laughs>